This is Colorado, one of America's awesome frontiers. Could there be a better place to talk about the Adventure Radio Protocol? And just hearing that, it's got that kind of name that makes you feel like you're unprepared if you're not already incorporating it into your comms plans, like you missed some sort of secret chapter in some field guide. But before you start building your comms plan around it, This is that DM32 radio that does digital and analog. And out here, we're using analog. It's the same tech your grandparents might've used. It's simple and that simplicity is exactly why it's still one of the most reliable tools we've got. But by applying just a little bit of critical thought, it can be upgraded. And that upgrade through the application is the Adventure Radio Protocol. Because buried in the static of VHF and UHF comms, there is this effort trying to solidify a new protocol that could change how people who follow the wilderness or 333 protocol for survival signaling or to connect into the wild. And that is this new adventure radio protocol that's trying to get pushed out. So the Adventure Radio Protocol, or ARP, is a new standard created by ham radio operator named George Zephopoulos, and his call sign is KJ6VU, in case you wanna look him up. And his intent was to design a protocol specifically for hikers, overlanders, the parks on the air guys, the summits on the air guys, and girls. Uh, and basically, I like where his head is at with this because instead of uh, what his justification was, instead of cluttering the national calling frequency, he wants the ARP to be designated on 146.58. And this would certainly give it the advantage of being a relatively clean and quiet frequency that is already used a lot by outdoor operators across the country. And this is where I'm saying the critical thought was applied and really comes into play here. George wants to have this as the sole frequency in use, but have each, for lack of a better way of saying it, use or discipline organized into their own CTCSS tone. And in that, the plan calls for the Adventure Radio Protocol to have a reserve on all CTCSS tones between 67.0 and 151.4 and each of those is going to be assigned over time for various purposes. So allowing some room for growth and the radio operators can use any CTCSS tone on that free same frequency, but above the 151.4 for any purposes that are not, you know, essentially governed by the AR protocol. And the things that they have, you know, governed so far are things like 67.0 is going to be the emergency calling frequency. 77.0 would be a ping, so basically Keying up will cause any automated monitoring station to respond to let you know there is a system on the air. 88.5 would be designated for the SOTA and POTA users and other operating events. 100 would be for general backcountry conversations. And 123.0 would trigger an automated messaging from local repeaters just to let you know that you're still in range and you have a signal. So that's some really cool stuff. <laughs> So guys, look, in my opinion, for whatever it's worth, I'm not convinced. The Wilderness Protocol has been around for a really long time and the GMRS user groups, they've already, you know, kind of adopted it into their own system. And as far as the frequency crowding, I've never seen that to be a real problem. 
you know, in an urban setting, much less out in the wild. So I'm asking, what's the actual value here? Is this just another layer of complexity for something that's supposed to be a really, really simple emergency solution? I'm absolutely open to being wrong. Maybe this thing is brilliant and I'm just not seeing it right now, but it just kind of feels like a solution that's looking for a problem. I want to be convinced. Are, are you sold on it? Uh, I, I'm definitely going to have a lot more coming on this topic. So looking forward to, you know, the engagement and getting your thoughts on all this. Oh, and if you guys have noticed, uh, new chest rig, radio rig, uh, I've been wear testing this. I'm going to be doing, you know, a whole bunch more work in this. So we're kind of seeing how everything plays out with it. And this is actually one that's current. So if I do like it or it works out well and you guys are interested in it, you'll actually be able to purchase it on like my last one. So lots more to come. So with that, hope you enjoyed it. And as always, be safe.